So this Grand Cherokee build was one that had been a long time in the making. The client with the Grand Cherokee came back in and, and wanted to do an upgrade but didn't want to take up any space. Dan came and asked me, he said, where do you think we can put these amplifiers? And I said, it's not gonna happen in this car. And then I realized that, you know, that wasn't the correct answer. I kind of looked at the headliner in the vehicle behind, between the sunroof and the, uh, the back of the, the vehicle and saw there was the, that dip in there. Back when I first started fabricating, I had to put three JL slash series amplifiers, the really big ones that they, that they made back then, uh, in the roof of this H3. It's something I've always wanted to approach again and see if I can do it much better. So the previous system was a front stage active setup and then it had some rear speakers that were ran passive uh, and then it had a subwoofer so we had a total of about seven, seven, eight channels depending on how you want to call sub, mono. We kept that same architecture uh, and we actually chose the Bosconi Gladen 1 amplifiers. So we used a 130.4 to power the front tweeters and the rear speakers and we did a 250.2 to power the, the front and mid bass drivers and then we did a 1001 to power the, the new Claire sub. So this time the, the client was looking for a little bit more performance and fidelity in the, uh, in the revision. Going to a class AB amplification and uh, just bumping up the power across the board was a, a good idea. The disassembly was a little bit different this time because there's things we kind of had to keep in mind of, you know, installing some of these components. We needed to know how much room we had. So it wasn't, you know, your standard, just pull everything apart and test fit it and you're done. Like it was a lot of removal, reinstall, removal, reinstall. Dan did a lot of the disassembly just so that he could kind of figure out and have a good frame of mind. That way I'm not having to explain to him everything, you know, like, oh, this is where it's gonna go. Sometimes it's a little easier to build things whenever you know exactly the space and available. I needed to see how everything went together for the headliner so that I knew how much space we were dealing with and where my mounting points were going to be and how that related to the, uh, the, the headliner and the cover and everything. Uh, so it was really important that I was able to take it all apart. Um, so basically I just, you know, went at it, went through, took all the bottom section out, uh, removed the amplifier in the back section. In order to get the headliner down, you have to pull all of the pillars, which means you have to pull, you know, the front, mid, rear, side panels, all that stuff. All that stuff has to come out just to be able to get the headliner to drop down. How are we gonna do this without bowing the roof? Because I'm worried about all that weight being suspended to the roof. Once the vehicle was apart, it was totally apparent that this was a lot easier than I had designed it in my head. It turns out you have a lot of room in your headliner. When Dan told me like, we're gonna be putting amps in the headliner, I kinda wanted to add a few choice words and I ended up being totally wrong, which is, that's okay. I've pitched it a few times over the years. This particular client was ready to do it. I never would have come up with this idea because I would have not thought it would have worked. We're, we're gonna give this a shot. So I've been looking at this and trying to figure out exactly where I'm gonna mount and uh, looking at the, at the structure up here and the, um, where the stronger metal is in the bracing, because there's a lot of flimsy metal that we have here. Well, definitely don't want to mount to or anything like that. Um, plenty of uh, strong braced metal that we can use, mounting points, and uh, I think if we do about three on the front, three on the back, and then a couple on the sides, I think we'll be pretty good. We'll just have to 
cut the headliner to reveal the spots that we need for the amps and then, you know, make a cover for that and kind of blend it all in. You're not gonna build this out of wood. This is something that needs to last the lifetime of the vehicle and anything that he's gonna do with it. One of the biggest differences between the last time I did it and this time is now I can weld. I've been installing for about five, close to five years now. And you know, had somebody come to me, you know, four years ago and been like, you're gonna be welding in car audio. I would have told them they were crazy. The last shop I worked at, they had a welder and they're like, I, I don't even know why we have this here. Like there's no point to, to weld in car audio. And it's gotten to a point now where here we do it every build, it almost seems like. You know, we're doing a little bit of metal, even on just, you know, a little amplifier mount. So you know, it's changed the way we install and it's kind of raised the standards a little bit.